Hey guys, Jeremy here at Norris Forge. So for Last Blade Standing Season 2, the challenge has been set that all of the bladesmiths have to make canister Damascus. And for a lot of smiths who don't do that regularly, it's kind of a, a scary thing. So as the current Last Blade Standing Champion, I thought that maybe I'd take a little bit of time and give you guys some of my tips and tricks that I've learned for doing canister over the years. So there's essentially two different methods for doing canister Damascus, either with whiteout or going in raw. Essentially, you can line your can with wide out to prevent that mild steel can from welding to your hardenable steel interior. Or you can just say, who cares? Go at it and grind it off later. As for me, I don't really see the point of doing canister Damascus if you're not gonna be able to see the pattern. So yeah, I'm a white out guy. In a timed competition, I probably would not be, but in this case, yeah. One of the first mistakes you see smiths do when they try the whiteout method for the first time, they coat their can and then stick it at their forge, essentially burning out their whiteout. Don't do that. Let it dry fully without fire before you enter your contents to your can. Why does whiteout work? Well, whiteout contains titanium dioxide, which doesn't forge weld. So you're essentially lining your can with a no-weld barrier. Good stuff. Pretty. Now, contrary to instinct, you wanna make sure that can is drier than a Popeye's biscuit before you start loading it up. While that thing is drying, now is the perfect time to start cleaning up your bits and bobs. By bits and bobs, I mean whatever you're gonna load the canister with. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use some random Damascus cutoffs. I'm gonna take these over to the grinder and make sure I get every single bit of forge scale off. If you're loading your canister with something else besides just square or flat pieces, it's essential that you get all that mill scale off as well. There's a myriad of chemicals you can use to eat away that scale. For me, I like to soak them overnight in muriatic acid in a well-ventilated area. Voila, my bits and bobs. You'll have to excuse the change audio. I have the forge going now. I like to begin my canisters with a good heaping helping of the powdered steel. Good soup. Add our bits and bobs and more powder. It's also essential that you tap the can as you go. There we are. Now we can weld on our cap. Now comes the most crucial part of this build, the weight. The number one mistake that Smiths make when doing canister Damascus is they don't let their cans soak in the heat long enough. Get the microwave burrito effect where it's hot on the outside but frozen in the middle. We don't want that. You wanna let that thing sit for at least 15 to 20 minutes at forge welding temperatures. Safety first, player. Now that I feel comfortable that my weld is set, I'm gonna set this down, let it cool off all the way. All right, so now I'm gonna cut off the ends and take a look inside. Nice. All right, so here's our canister and here's our billet. The other two pieces kind of rolled across the shop. As you can see, I just cut the ends off and I run one line up either side and she taps right out. Canister is really not that difficult, but it's extremely easy to mess up. Let your whiteout dry, clean your bits and bobs, and let it soak in that heat. I really hope this helps guys and I look forward to seeing your blades in the competition. Good luck you little nerds.